Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 18th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Oh, life could be a dream If I could take you up in paradise Oh, oh who's interfering with my nostalgia? Why, it's the messy old Islamic terrorists again Them Islamic terrorists again Well, we can't say that they derailed the train We wouldn't expect that from Al-Qaeda and their fellow travelers here in America Everything's under control, isn't it? Now, even though Al-Qaeda said that the uh, derailment of trains is a uh, operation they're going to engage in, we shouldn't rush the gu- judgment. The NTSB is investigating the train derailment as a major incident. Will we ever get to the truth? Yeah, sure, like we did in Las Vegas. Sure, we'll get to the truth. Everything is coming up roses. The stock market is booming. And if you're a hedge fund operator, you never had it so good. If you're a billionaire, you made more money in the last six months than you made the than your father made in 60 lifetimes, what could be better? But the question for you is the Trump end of year report card on all levels. I was going to do that, and I think I still may do that, but I'll do some other stuff as well on the show. You're listening to the Savage Nation. If you don't know what you're listening to, I feel bad for you. But I'm doing a report card. It's sort of the last week of school. The school is the United States. Trump is the principal, and we're going to rate the principal today. So at the end of his first year in office, I realized he didn't take office till February. I realized that, as predicted on the back of Trump's war, I said, and the patriots who elected him have vowed to take their country back, standing in their way are far-left radicals who have taken over the Democratic Party, check. Rhinos protecting their big business special interests, check. War profiteers with trillions to lose if Trump restores peace, check. Liberal media who will stop at nothing to bring Trump down. Check. While everyone else was still talking about the election, Michael Savage was already looking ahead to the war Trump and his supporters will have to fight. Savage lays out a battle plan for victory in Trump's war. Well, I did. It was a best-selling book, number one at that, with zero publicity. And I'm asking you at the end of the year to rate Donald Trump. Now, I put it up on my on my uh, Twitter feed and my Facebook feed. And I'm going to read you some of the sample comments. Most of the people who are commenting love Donald Trump. So I wouldn't expect it to be any other way here on the show because you're primarily Trump supporters. After all, we're not the people who supported Ted Cruz and now licked Trump's boots. After all, we're not the people who called you deplorable for a year straight and mocked you and are now killing each other to uh, cross the barrier into the White House to see if they can get a little vigorous out of it. You are the supporters of Donald Trump. And I'd like to know, I I don't want to just hear from those who love Donald Trump. I want to know what you think about him on the wall, taxes, tariffs, deportations, Obamacare, guns, military strength, schools, abortion, religion. What will the new president do, I ask? Now, I could rate him on these things. I would say overall on many of these things he's doing very well. I had said toward the end of the uh, primaries, if we got 30%, it would be 130% more than we'd get from her. So in many cases, many people voted for Donald Trump just to avoid her. And that's the truth. And that's why there's such dissension in the country today. But let's start in looking at this together. I I, I want to do this, though. Listen to me. I want to take unscreened calls for the first one or two segments. I want it raw. I want it naked. I want the naked city of the savage nation to exhibit their, their feelings. How would you rank the President of the United States after about a year on these topics, the wall, taxes, tariffs, deportations, Obamacare, guns, military strength, schools, abortion, and religion. And I guess you can't answer that question in a vacuum. You have to answer that question 
in context of where we, we would be today had she won. Because I can tell you right now, we'd be in worse shape on every topic had she won, which would be true for any Democrat. There are no middle-of-the-road Democrats anymore. There are no conservative Democrats anymore. They're gone. It's a party that's moved so far to the left that it's unrecognizable, even to these people in the country who call themselves liberals. True liberals realize the party has left them. And they are representing not the middle class of America, but the far-left radicals of the university class and foreign interests. So in, in the context of comparison to her, we have to say Trump's doing great. But now let's think of it in terms of ourselves, our expectations. And remember, it's only one year into the administration. I mean, we have at least three, maybe eight, uh, four, uh, one, three, seven more years to go. And maybe at the end of five years, we'll see the wall built. We'll see taxes actually coming down for those of us who work our, uh, our behinds off to support the bums in this country. Because I'm paying more under this tax plan. We got screwed. And I don't go for the, 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 the fallacious argument being put out there by the rubberneckers in the media who say, well, you, you should complain about the high taxes in your state. You shouldn't complain about Trump uh, removing the deduction. No. No, you take it out of your state. Well, the states that we live in, like California and New York, we have no representation. So that's a false argument that, that can only be put out by a high school dropout in talk radio who poses as a talk show host and gets away with it. That's a stupid argument. Trump is our representative, not our states. Our states don't represent us at all. So Mnuchin puts out a statement and says, yes, there are rich people who are having their taxes going up. I think we should listen to clip four so we can have a tax discussion for a few minutes on the Savage Nation. Let's have 04, please, Robert. We are getting rid of lots and lots of deductions. The biggest is we're capping state and local deductions at $10,000. So one of the things we were very sensitive to is the high tax states make up a big part of the economy. So even lowering the top rate from 39.6 to 37, in the high tax states, actually rich people taxes will be going up and the reason yeah, right. why we lowered the top rate is because yeah, we are right. sensitive to that's a very large part of the economy but the president was right there are people who are rich people that are having their taxes going up well let's put this in context if hillary clinton had won with a republican congress i can guarantee you she wouldn't have been able to get away with this they would have screamed bloody murder the very same rhinos who were screwing those of us who support the whole economy would be saying oh no you're a socialist Hillary's a communist. Hillary's a Marxist. Hillary's this. Hillary's that. But that the rhinos did it to screw those of us who support the whole economy while having the audacity to lower the taxes of the corporate structure to 20%. What a kick in the guts that is. Anyone who disagrees with this is a fool and a brigand, a liar through and through. It's easy for you to sit there and say, oh, blame your states. Blame your high tax states. Well, that's a given. But we have no representation. I live in California. I pay 14% state tax on top of my 39.7. We thought we'd get some tax relief. We're paying more, not less. This is in a Republican administration with a Republican president. Who do they think they're fooling by telling us, oh, that's okay, take it out on your state. Go tell Jerry Brown to lower your taxes. I'll tell you something else. They're going to raise the taxes in California. In fact, they're floating a bill in this state to provide medical care for all illegal aliens, everyone in the state, legally or illegally. Tell me who's going to pay that extra $4 billion. It's going to come out of the pockets of those of us who are already being punished by the Trump administration, mainly Mr. Mnuchin. See, Mnuchin was trying to cover his tracks. He's the one who probably wrote the tax bill after he's a brilliant man. So you ask yourself, why would they go after the most productive citizens in the states of New York and California? Why would they do that? They're acting exactly the same way as the Democrats would have done, which would be punish the productive citizens of these states. The difference is if the Democrats had even proposed such a thing, why the rhinos would be screaming, wouldn't they? McDonald, whatever his name is, O'Donnell, I don't remember his name. O'Donnell, McDonald, the gobbler, Mitch McDonald, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McDonald, old McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had some rich to fleece, E-I-E-I-O. With a little fleecing here and a little fleecing there, old Mitchy Mitchy had nowhere to go. 
So he's fleecing those of us who pay the most taxes in the country, and we have every right to say foul ball. This is a foul ball that could never, ever have been passed had there been a Hillary Clinton in the White House. Because remember, there would still be a Republican Congress. And what would they do if she said, well, we're going to lower the top rate from 39.7 to 37, but we're going to eliminate the state tax deductions for California and New York uh, uh, from the federal tax. They would have screamed like bloody murder. This is an outrage. It's not Republican. It's not fiscal conservatism. It is fiscal cronyism. And what we are looking at now is fiscal cronyism of a Bush kind, meaning the only beneficiaries from this tax scam are major corporations. They're the biggest winners, and this is under a Republican administration. You say, well, of course, they're always been for big business. <laughs> so what else is the under the sun? In other words, the whole thing is a charade. You have to read Plato to understand what I mean by that. You're only seeing the shadows on the wall. You're not even seeing the actors. You're seeing the shadows and reacting to the shadows. But the fact of the matter is, the actors are the corporations who put Trump in power, or after he became president against their will, did a deal with him to make sure they were the biggest beneficiaries, in plain English. No, my friends, this is a foul ball. On taxes, not good. But what about the other things? Some of them are very good. Some of them are very good. The wall, we got to give them a zero. Uh, deportations, I'm sorry to tell you, but the immigrants coming over the border now are about the same levels of that as under Obama. You may not know that, but we don't know the reason why. They're pouring over the border from Mexico. Did you know that? Something has happened on the border where not only do we not have a wall, we have Swiss cheese. It's porous again. So, again... So many topics in, in that list for the report card. Just as in a school, you have different subjects. So a president is rated on different subjects. Taxes are one of them. I do not give him an A. I give him a very low grade in terms of who he's punishing, which are the most productive citizens in America, which is an outrage, by the way, a true outrage in a Republican during a Republican administration. And I want to repeat again, this could never have passed this tax bill if Hillary Clinton was proposing it. It would have been shot down because it could never have been passed. The Republicans would have been screaming like bloody murder. But now we have no one to uh, turn our attention to, do we? We have only ourselves to turn to. So what's the option for those of us who live in New York State or California who are going to pay much more in income tax? Well, they move to another state. I guess that's always an option, tell people to emigrate. But you know what? I really don't want to be a refugee in my own country. I really don't want to become a tax refugee because of Donald Trump's flawed tax policies. This is the Savage Nation. You're welcome to call at 855-407-282, but I caution you, the lines are sold out. And I'm going to take calls on both sides of the question of how do you rate Principal Trump after one year as Principal of the United States of America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Today is the end-of-year report card for the President of the United States. Uh, amongst those of you who put him in office primarily, there are those of you who didn't vote for him who listen to the show religiously, but, you know, if you want to call, fine. Before I take your calls, which I will take uh, on the program, I want to refer to, I, I would say it's it's probably the finest political book ever written called Trump's War. I was just rereading Trump's Economic War on Taxes, and the subchapter is Taxation and Regulation with Sellout Representation. And I wrote, just like the rigged trade deals, Washington and corporate America have completely rigged our tax code. And if you read into the chapter, which I may do later, there is another line that is worth quoting on my own program. The rigged tax code is just another form of slime in the swamp, and Republicans will call Trump a closet liberal for wanting to drain that particular slime out of it. And so, all of a sudden, we are seeing the swamp rise again. And 
this is an outrage. It's an outrage that what Trump's people, mainly Mnuchin, just got away with, I don't think the Democrats could have gotten away with. And I'll be quoted on that. You can take that to the bank. I allege that had Hillary won with a Republican Congress, had this very tax deal been presented by the Democrats, the very same fake Republicans who are screaming it's the greatest thing ever passed would have rejected it by saying it attacks the wealthy, it's a corporate handout, the average guy doesn't benefit from it. That's what you would have heard. But they just pulled a sleight of hand on us. So it doesn't really matter who's in power when it comes down to the dollars and cents. Big business just had the biggest payoff in their life. But what about those of us who have wealth, which we have worked for all of our lives, but we're not big business? No matter how successful a family business may be, it is not big business. We do not benefit. And that applies to doctors, lawyers, engineers, accountants. It applies to you who run a cookie store. Let's say you worked all your life and you're filing under a Chapter S corporation. You're not going to pay less in California. You're going to pay more. You're going to pay more in New York State. Say, well, I don't care about them. They vote Democrat. Well, well excuse me. You're telling me that 30% of the electorate should be dismissed in California? Yeah, 28 to 30% of people in California are not Democrats. We have no representation. And we have a president who has not done anything for us with regard to tax relief. He just, just trumped us uh, by raising our taxes and telling us it's good for us. I'm sorry. If Hillary had done that, we'd be screaming. And the Republicans never would have passed it. You can take that to the bank. I should turn it over to you, end of your report card. I'm going to ask you also today uh, about God, faith, and reason. I'm trying to figure a way to get you to buy one for a soldier or a veteran who can't afford one, but I don't know how to arrange that, other than telling you to go to a bookstore, buy a copy, and the next time you see a person in uniform, give them one. That's the only thing I can do to say, I, what, what else am I saying? Give one for free to a, to a veteran or a current soldier. I can't do it any other way. I have no, no capacity for it. And then should all people on federal terror watch lists be currently detained in preventative detention before they strike and blow up another train rail? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. It is the Savage Nation. It's March 24th. It'll be 24 years in radio. That's interesting. March 24th, 24 years. You talk about people into numerology. Wow. Well, when the holidays, people are getting ready to go away. Or they've gone away. Whatever. And I'm talking about taxes now. We're talking about rating the president on his first year in office, on all of those topics I mentioned from Trump's war. And I'm going to let you speak. I'm going to just take calls for a while. I've given you my opinion on the tax the tax deal, which is one of the greatest screwings the wealthy in this country have ever had. And uh, of all ironies, it's occurring during a Republican-controlled Congress and presidency. And I'll repeat again in case you missed it. Had Hillary won... She could never have passed this tax deal because the Republicans would have blocked it. The very same rhinos who just did this would have blocked it, saying it's uh, class warfare to attack the rich. She would have been, they would have been screaming, oh, you can't attack the, uh, attack the wealthy. See, Marxism, class warfare, Marxism, Marxism. Well, we got a lot of mileage out of Marxism during Obama's uh, eight years, didn't we? I am the only one in the media, I'm an independent conservative, I'll keep repeating it over and over again, over and over again until you finally get the message. Borders, language, culture, that's my motto. It has not been co-opted by anybody else. I'm asking you again, and I'll ask you over and over again, is our border more secure? Well, I'll answer it for you. Border crossings are at the level that they were during Obama, so you can put an X through that. So where are we winning here? I guess the military is stronger. I guess respect for the military is stronger, but I don't know who's running the military. When I see that Trump did the right thing and said he wanted to 
uh, block transvestites or transgenders or transsexuals, whatever, from openly joining the military because it would destroy troop morale and cost too much. He was overridden by his own Defense Department a week ago. So you could say he's doing the right thing, but his administration isn't. If you want to put it that way, it's not all about him. He's only one man. You can look at it that way. But I want, I want to know what you think. And these are unscreened phone calls right now. So let's begin on WFNC Radio, Bill Line 3. Let's keep it to 30 seconds or less. P two, two rules. Don't ask me how I am because you don't know me. Number two, make it quick. Go right to your point. So Bill Line 3, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. How do you rate Trump after a first year? Uh, I'm, I'm putting down as a uh, B minus, and the reason that I'm that I'm saying this is that for I'm 75 years old, and for the past 40 years I've been voting, and every one of the daggone people in there have been nothing but crooks, probably crooked politicians, and I'm and I'm happy to uh, have a uh, a regular person in there to try to take care of uh, some of our. Um, uh, yeah, the problems right. Yeah. I told you to vote for Trump because he was a business man, not a politician. Isn't that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Well, do you feel that he has given us our money's worth? I, I think if if he had if he had the chance of getting rid of a lot of those daggone people that's in there that's holding him back, yeah, I think I think he could probably do uh, do a much better job. But you got to get rid of that daggone swamp in those and. Uh, the other uh, crooked politicians. That's, I mean, it's been it's been going this way for fifty years. And I and right. I, well, I think that the swamp, by the way, has now won again. And what they've done is given tax breaks primarily to, to the, the biggest corporations. And I don't see the benefit to anybody else. So uh, I would agree with you, and I thank you for the call. I know I should have given out a free book, God, Faith, and Reason, but I forgot. Why should I give out any more free books? Why don't you just go buy one already the week before, Chris? Okay, no free books this week. It's time for you to step up to the plate and put God back into the bookstores. It's that simple. It's not going to change my lifestyle. You know, I keep telling you, it's past that point. I'm not going to go on a new vacation. Uh, I'm not going to rebuild the engine of my Jag XK. I've already done that for $16,000. It's still leaking. I'm joking. Uh, no, I'm serious. The um, I, I don't have very expensive tastes beyond a certain level. I don't wear any jewelry. I don't gamble. I don't use drugs. Isn't that weird? What would people do if they had money? Do you ever think about that? Say like, oh, if I had money, I'd do this, I'd do that. I don't like jewelry. I um, hate traveling. I don't gamble. I don't use drugs. So what good is money after a certain point when you think about it? You know, I was going to do a whole show this week. I, I, this is an interesting. Just it popped in my head. Pardon me. We're going to so we don't get stuck. <laughs> it's the trials and tribulations of a philanthropist in America today. I was going to do a whole show on it. Do you know that it's almost impossible to give money away to certain groups? Like, for example, my natural instincts you know, I've helped soldiers in the past. I reunited that soldier with his door. Remember him? Remember I did something good for him? I never heard from him again, but okay. He was he was shattered from the war, what they did to him. And I got his dog back for him. I bought him a van for $17,000. I never got even so much as a thank you. That's the way it is. But that's not the trials and tribulations. Let's say I want to help orphans. Let's say one of my pet charities would be to help orphans. There are none in America. The social welfare state that we have, there are no orphans in America. None. That's number one. So you can't. There's no foundling homes, as there would have been in the past. I would gladly help kids without parents. They all have parents. The state takes care of them. The federal government takes care of them. So that's over with. Uh, as far as animal charities, most of them are fraudulent. As someone who's given significant amounts of money to most of these charities, they use it for themselves. I don't think one elephant has been saved. I don't think one tusk has been stopped from going to China. So you say, okay, forget that. So well, you don't know what to do. As someone who wants to help, you don't know which way to turn. I try to even help nuns. I can't find any. They're all rich and happy and fat. Even the nuns are happy and fat in the country. I like nuns. I, I've always enjoyed... A, I like nuns. You can't help them. The others, I mean, in religion, it's like a religion incorporated. They use it for trips to Israel. You give them money that you think you're going to help with the religion. Next thing you hear, they're in Israel, you know, having, having a bar mitzvah somewhere on your money. So, you know, you get jaundiced on it. And it's enough to turn you into a really scroogey kind of personality. And I don't think I'm alone on this. I mean, has anyone ever done a show on that? 
I was going to write a column on it for uh, my website, michaelsavage.com, which I'll pump over and over again because I've got, I've really got good news for you. The newsletter goes out to you for free twice a week. It's an original column I write for the, for the newsletter, and you get it in your email for, for nothing, zero, twice a week. Yes, it helps me build up my mailing list, but it doesn't cost you anything. It's a trick we use in the, in the website business to build up our traffic is we give you a free newsletter, but I actually write them. And I think it's well worth it since you're paying nothing for it. It's a good value. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. So, um, yeah, I got some other stuff I could do today. I could read from God, Faith, and Reason. I may do that. There's some good stuff in there I haven't read yet. And from Trump's War. You know what I really want to tell you is the, uh, I have so many things to say all at once. And I'm only on the air this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I decided for the first time in my entire career to take a long vacation. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Mike, stay. Mike, don't go. Mike, we don't know what to do with that. Blah, 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 blah. Mike's disappearing for 10 days unless there's some major national event. I mean, Congress will be closed. The presidents at Mar a Lago, Mar a Lago from the sea to the lake. So I I just need a time away. I just want to, like, rejuvenate myself. Well, of course, I'm going to be working anyway. I'm working on a new book. I know it's not coming out in the spring. I, I made a commitment to everyone. I'm not doing another book in the spring, but I can't help it. It's what I do. I'm also taking all of my old journals from 1969 onwards with me, wherever I may or may not go. I intend to edit my own journals for a while. I want to see the younger me and what an idiot I made of myself and make sure it never sees the light of day. No, I have to, I have to expunge my early journals of stupid stuff. And so if I ever publish the collected journals of Michael Savage, I, I don't want them to be an idiotic, you know, c assemblage of garbage. Some of it's brilliant, I must admit. I was way ahead of my time in seeing feminists taking over the planet and destroying boys. That I saw in 1969. I actually have a, an experimental play about women ruining young boys and men, destroying them. Oh, yeah, I was all there. I saw it right away. They put a bunch of boys into a home and they make them eat cheese to condition them. And they always say, yes, ma'am, that kind of thing. You know, I, I mean, I saw it a long time ago, but you don't get rewarded for seeing things in advance. What you do is you get castigated and punished. And when you criticize a president who you put in office, people will mistake you for somebody who is doing it for personal gain, which I am not doing it. I'm doing it because I'm an independent conservative talk show host, which I have always been. And the day I lose my credibility, I lose everything. You know, it's funny. I ran into a friend of mine who I went to college with. He lives near me. We don't see each other a lot, but we've gotten friendlier over the years. We used to be really close, then we drifted apart, then we became friendly. And he's been a lifetime liberal. I know that. It's okay. It's one of the reasons we don't talk politics. But we have we have things in common, like he knew my mother and father while they were alive. He was in my little house in Queens. So how could you not love a guy like that? And he's facing a serious illness. You know, I'm, you get together again. You reminisce about friends who passed away and friends who are still living. So, you know, we, we hang out a little bit once in a while. So I ran into him in the supermarket the other day, and he said to me, you know what you're doing on the radio? He's a religious listener to the show. He said, what you're doing on the radio, I really love now. I love it, love it, love it. He said, I've been listening for years. You're better than ever. I said, well, what do you love? He said, I like the independent path that you're taking where you're willing to take the chance of being critical of this administration rather than just kissing his boots like the others are doing. And he said, what guy, and he's a Democrat, he said, what, what riles him the most is that the others who were attacking Trump for a year straight, insulting Trump's voters, backing other candidates, are now his most, most loyal and slavish worshipers. He said, well, I said, that's their problem, not mine. He said, no, please, you're the only one in the media I listen to because of that. So I said, okay, thanks. I hope you're well. How are your medical results and that stuff, you know? So here we are. God, the time is flying. I knew it would. You know, it's like the last days of the year to me on radio, bar some horrible tragedy occurring where I have to go live again from wherever I am in the world. I do reserve the right to um, do Periscope on Twitter if I get completely bored. I will simply go on Periscope without any announcement and do a little, sh you know, like a little three-minute show from somewhere in the world. That might be fun. It's so liberating, i got to tell you. Just get up there and do it. I've never seen the technology like we have today. I mean, if you don't have to monetize it, you can just be real famous fast. That's what most of the people are doing on these on these social apps. I, what do they do after they become famous on YouTube and no one pays them a dime? 
where they walk around New York saying I'm famous on YouTube, but no one ever heard of me because I stood on my head with a bowling ball on my foot. I'm that guy. No one cares. The first thing you have to learn if you're if you're an exhibitionist, let me help you. If you're a, if you are a young millennial, millennial exhibitionist, let me give you a little hint. No one cares about what you may be doing on social media unless you're making a, a dime off it. The first thing to remember is we live in a society that rewards you in some ways, and you know a claim unto itself is worthless. So if it's not paying anything, Sonny, cut your hair and get a job. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You're listening to Michael Savage. Coming up at 3, it's Mark Levin on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Hey, 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 wouldn't it be great to have all the energy you want all day long? Well, unfortunately, fatigue often gets in the way, even for everyday activities. And frankly, you know what? It gets worse every year. Well, here's why. You see, when you're 20, your body has a natural ability to maintain a healthy circulation. But unfortunately, by age 40, that ability decreases by half. That leaves you feeling tired. So what can you do to increase that youthful natural circulation and fight fatigue? Drink Super Beats. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. Only Super Beats is made from beets grown to exacting standards and then concentrated into superfood crystals just for you. So if you want to increase your own natural energy, all you do is call 800-481-0504 or go to SavageLovesBeats.com. And with your first order, they're going to give you another 30-day supply of Super Beats for free, plus free indicator strips to see how Super Beats actually work for you. And also free shipping, of course. So call 800-481-0504 or go to SavageLovesBeats.com. Today they we are... for every boy and girl, they're just one love in this whole world. And I know, I Song, uh, is dedicated to Robert Borowski and his lovely wife, the board operator of the show. The heavenly touch of your embrace right, tells me you know what for the average listener. They're bitter. Most people are embittered. They have a bad marriage or no marriage. They have no girlfriend, no boyfriend. That's why they listen to talk radio. This is, uh, the, the audience of talk radio is a very unique audience. Uh, and you can't play love songs because they don't like love songs. You know, if you play a love song, they feel lost and lonely. This is the loneliest time of the year, by the way. Many people are in steep depressions. <laughs> around holidays i know it's a well-known sociological phenomenon it's been known for decades that the, the christmas holidays are the loneliest time of the year for most people and a lot of reasons expectations of family then you get there and you want to cut your wrists stuff like that like you can't wait to get under the tree and it's over and then what nothing ha- nothing changed in your life you're still the same miserable person you were before christmas so people don't know what to do, do with themselves it's just what life is all about when you get used to it you know you got to live with it so people go into steep, they go into dives. Divorces increase around this time. You want me to give you the Scrooge McSavage version of the <laughs> of the holidays? I just did. I don't want to beat you up on him. It's a very, no, if you're feeling bad, let me tell you, it's you're not alone. And then there's the issue of the, the holidays that you don't have a family. And maybe you remember when you did have one and you're alone and your mother's dead, your father's dead. You don't talk to your sister. She doesn't talk to you. No one in your family likes you and you're alone. I mean, these things come up too. Or let's say you do have a family, a loving family. You go to it, they still don't like you, no matter what. You fly across the country, you got the tickets, you risk the flu, you risk a terrorist attack. You finally get there, you go into the motel, they don't even put you up in the house. And then you finally go to the dinner and it's a letdown. Why? Because it just, it's not what you thought it would be. You're not, because you're not 12 anymore. That's why. Holidays are for children. Holidays are for children. I mean, they're supposed to have a dream. How many adults really enjoy with the presents opening up, with the paper, the mess all over the floor? None. And then the, the food is horrible. You get sick usually from the fat and the cholesterol and the cream and the dairy and the eggnog. Your diet is shot. You gain five pounds. You come home, it's over. But that's what it is. So, by the way, my newsletter has pictures of Karen's reminding me. She puts photos of Teddy the dog, Savage Eye camera photos, because I'm a big photographer, and stories you may have missed. She said, I use the most popular stories we have on the site. Good for Karen. Karen has tripled 
the uh, traffic on my website since she took it over. Do you know that? Let's hear it for Karen. She just got married, too. I can't even use her old name of O'Toole. This is the Savage Nation. Be here and have a good time. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I, I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home. But it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> 